ஹலோ ஃப்ரெண்ட்ஸ் வெல்கம் டு சூசன் அண்ட் ஜான் மேட்யூப் இன் திஸ் வீடியோ வி லேர்ன் அபவுட் த இன்டர்வல் எஸ்டிமேஷன் அண்ட் அஃப்கோர்ஸ் திஸ் இஸ் த கண்டினியூஷன் ஆஃப் த சாம்பிளிங் In the last two videos, we learned about sampling distribution. Also, we learned about the term estimation. So, I'll give you a rough idea of what is happening. So, we have a huge population. Let's assume for our convenience. Normally, population will contain thousands and thousands of members. And getting information or collecting data from members. population is practically impossible in many cases and if you are able to do that that's good but normally it is impossible so what we do is we take samples we take random samples and once we have samples we will be able to find the sample mean the sample standard deviation or even we can measure sample proportion if we are interested in the population proportion etc etc uh, but our aim is to predict the population mean the population standard deviation population proportion etc 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 and these measures which we obtain from the sample are called statistics and the measures uh, which we are supposed to estimate are called the parameters so our basic aim is using a sample statistic we try to estimate the population parameter and this process is called estimation and there is something called interval estimation in interval estimation what we do is using these sample statistic we provide a confidence interval that means an interval with some sort of guarantee uh, i'll give you an example we know x bar and with the help of x bar and sample standard deviation sample size etc what i do is i'll predict with some percentage of confidence that the population parameter mu will be between some uh, let's say a lower limit and an upper limit and such estimation is called interval estimation so let's uh, start with the formula so look at this let's assume x bar is given also assume that we have a sample which is large in size in the last video we discuss what is large and small so large means greater than or equal to 30 so we have a large sample and in a large sample remember that sigma is approximately s so we know x bar and we know the sample standard deviation or the population standard deviation or we approximate the population standard deviation to be the sample standard deviation because the sample size is large and we need one more thing that is the confidence level okay confidence level means how confident do you want the prediction to be for example um, if i claim that i am 95% sure that this question will come for the exam that means i am taking a 5% risk think about it i told you i am 95% confident this question will come for the exam and finally you went for the exam and this question didn't come can you blame me no you cannot because i never gave you a guarantee you didn't listen to me properly what i told you was there is a 5% risk 5% i am not sure whether this question will come or not so it's kind of like two sides of a coin when we give confidence there will be some sort of risk and this risk in the statistics books will be written as 
the significance level that means we should be aware of this part and significance level um, is denoted by book to book it's different uh, let's uh, in some books they use alpha and beta in some books uh, they use alpha anyway uh, let's follow the notation which is normally followed uh, in your university so significance level is denoted by alpha normally we tend to write significance level in percentage and it is very easy to find suppose someone tells you 98 percentage confidence so that implies there is a two percentage significance or two percentage risk so go ahead denote alpha is equal to two percentage and normally the significance level will be kept within 10 percentage but mathematically you can take any number but think practically you see a lot of advertisements you see a lot of things uh, which comes with guarantee just take a newspaper and check it or uh, do you believe someone if he's extra honest and tells you yeah i'm 75 percent sure that my device is uh, really good do you think someone will buy his product even if he's honest no so normally the guarantee significance all these things will be above 90. so mathematically this alpha can be any number but practically we keep it within 10 percentage once more i'll make it very clear so you're given the sample mean and a sample size which is bigger than or equal to 30 and you know this population standard deviation or the sample standard deviation and of course if the sample size is large both are approximately the same and you know the amount of risk you are allowed to take the significance okay now with all these things you will be able to find an interval for the population mean that means you're able to do an interval estimation for mu that means and remember mu stands for population mean so mu belongs to x bar minus error comma x bar plus e okay now look at this this e is given by mod z alpha by 2 into sigma by root 10 wait a minute suppose the same uh, thing is given that is x bar is known but sample size is small but sample size is small so that's the only difference and when sample size is small there is, you cannot approximate when sample size is small sigma is not equal to s so don't even think about sigma you know s or you'll be able to evaluate s from the data and the significance level is the same in this case uh, the formula will be same our uh, interval estimation will be the same the interval will be same but error is given by t distribution so it will be like t alpha by 2 comma n minus 1 uh, if you have ever check the t tables you know what this means and multiplied by s by root n so this is the formula when n is large and this is the formula when n is small i'll strongly recommend you note this formula and soon there will be a formula for proportion that means we know the sample proportion and we try to predict the population proportion so please note down these formulae and let's try one question and let's try a question from your past years question paper okay i found a question from 2070 uh, that works so read the question an analysis for pH in a random sample of water from 40 rainfalls showed that the mean is 6.7 and standard deviation is 0.5. So look at this. The sample mean is 6.7. The sample size is 40. 
and of course the sample standard deviation is 0.5 so we are given x bar is equal to 6.7 and s is equal to 0.5 and the sample size is 40 in bracket i'm going to write what should i write yeah large and the confidence level is 99 percentage which implies the significance the risk will be alpha is equal to one percentage and of course that implies alpha by 2 equal to 0.5 percentage that is alpha by 2 is equal to 0 0.05 okay now they are asking find a 99 percentage confidence interval for the mean ph so i hope you understood the question the civil engineers has measured uh, they have measured 40 rainfalls and they want to predict this for all the rainfalls which had happened and which is going to happen so they have given us x bar and they are talking about mu okay so let's write the formula the required interval is x bar minus e comma x bar plus e and e is given by wait a minute we had two options one for large and one for small in large we use normal distribution and in small we use t distribution so ah uh, this is large so the formula is mod z alpha by 2 into sigma by root 10 it's a large sample so sigma is approximately yes and we need this character z 0 0.05 multiplied by 0.5 the whole divided by root under 40 so this is nothing look at this z 0 0.05 means we have to find the point on the x-axis in such a way that the area beyond this will be 0 0.05 or if you want you can check this side the area before this will be 0 0.05 anyway i'm going for this because we can use the negative table so 0 0.05 yeah i'll magnify this okay i can see the values i hope you can see the value 0 0.05 okay 0 0.05 is between this and if star is given it's a special value so just follow the star and this arrow and you'll find the actual value or you can go for the usual technique you can go this side and go above so minus 1.6 4 or minus 1.65 or you can go for the average value and that will be minus 1.645 is equal to 1.645 multiplied by 0.5 by root under 40 and use the calculator that's equal to 0 0.2036 okay now what we do is we plug in these values in the interval so the required interval is x bar that is 6.7 minus 0 0.2036 comma 6.7 plus 0 0.2036 again use a calculator and the answer is 6.4964 comma 6.9036 so the conclusion is we are 99 percent confident because the confidence level is 99 percent that the mean ph in rainfall will be between 6.4964 and 6.9036 let's check out one more problem so that the concept becomes clear 
and that also from your past year's question paper. So we are ready with the second question. Let's read. To investigate the average time um, taken to assemble a certain computer component, the industrial engineer at an electronics firm timed 40 technicians in the performance and the mean is 12.73 standard deviation okay so they are asking what is the 98 percent confidence interval for true average time so look at this it's very interesting so one industrial engineer wants to predict how much time does it take in general for the assembly process so what he did is he selected 40 of the technicians so the sample size is 40 that is large and he timed them he measured the time he found the sample mean to be 12.73 minutes and the standard deviation is equal to 2.06 minutes with this information now he wants to predict and that also with 98 percentage confidence what might be the true interval so basically he is interested in mu and what is the formula x bar minus e comma x bar plus e where e is given by wait a minute there are two options for e and the options depend upon whether the sample is large or small clearly our sample size is bigger than or equal to 30 so it is large so i'm going to write the formula z alpha by 2 sigma by root n by the way i guess i went a little bit wrong here you'd write s yes. Anyway, that's approximately sigma because it is large. Still, it's better to write the proper thing. Uh, we write alpha. Alpha equal to, yeah, 2 percentage because he wants to be 98 percentage confidence. So, 2 percentage is risk. So, alpha by 2 is 1 percentage and that will be 0 0.01. And from the tables we have to find said point um, zero one to 0.06 by root under 40 so the value is point zero. okay it's between these two quantities so 2.325 okay of course it's negative but when we take modulus it will be positive so let us substitute so it's 2.325 multiplied by these things use a calculator you get 0.76 now the interval so that will be x bar what is x bar 12.73 minus 0.76 and 12.73 plus 0.76 simplifying we get 11.97 minutes they're measuring in minutes so to 4.49 13.49 minutes that's it so the technician is 98 percent is confident that the assembly time will be always between 11.97 minutes and 13.49 minutes and how confident is he 98 percentage confident so let's try one more question and this time it will be slightly different okay so be ready with a calculator and the question is not complete but i found it in a 2074 question paper anyway i'll make you understand the question so look at this they have measured the hardness of magnesium alloy and we have a few sample data 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 so n equal to 10 I told you this question will be slightly different and what's the difference 
yeah it's a small sample it is less than 30 so it's a small sample and the second difference is they have not given us x bar they have not given us the sample standard deviation so take a calculator input all these quantities in your calculator put it in one variable frequency of when you use the calculator okay so I got 64.68 and this is 1.769 and that's it so if you know how to use the calculator this part will be very easy and if you don't know you won't be able to do this problem okay now next question how confident should be our interval estimation 99 so that means the significance level will be one percentage so alpha by 2 is equal to 0.5 percentage that's 0 0.005 now look at this earlier we had two options when we calculate the formula is same the uh, interval is same it is like x bar minus e and x bar plus e but the value of e depends on whether the sample size is small or large okay if it is small we use another distribution called t distribution whose format will be alpha by 2 comma n minus 1 and multiplied by s by root n here we have to use the sample standard deviation itself so let's substitute those values 0 0.005 comma 10 minus 1 is 9 multiplied by 1.769 whole divided by root under 10 so let's go for the t tables i hope you're ready with t tables now look at this the one which they give in your exam uh, will be multi-optional it will be given area in one tail and area in two tail trust me you are not going to use area in two tail um, now or later so you can just cut that area in two tail just use this and it's very easy to locate it's not complicated like our normal tables so our significance level is 0 0.005 and it is 9 so it is 3.250 so that's it substitute 3.250 multiplied by this and we get e is equal to 1.818 use the calculator and confirm it now plug in this value you know what to do and i got 62.862 and 66.498 check it once or twice with the help of a calculator and my conclusion will be I'm 99 percentage confident that the true hardness of magnesium alloy will be between these two numbers now let's try one more question and this time we are going to learn about proportion now look at this suppose the sample proportion is given sample proportion is denoted by p suffix s or p cap or even p tilde but i prefer this so let's use p cap for the time being and the population proportion is denoted by p so look at this uh, let's talk about something very simple i want to know how many students in my college loves coffee than tea so i'm going to ask everyone each and everyone no 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 that's almost impossible there are thousands of students okay so now what i'm planning to do is i'll ask a few students randomly here and there and I'll give them option do you like tea or coffee so they will give me coffee tea 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 coffee tea etc maybe I'll ask 30 students maybe I'll ask 100 students 
maybe in last maybe 143 students anyway I will end up with a sample proportion I may be able to know that 23 out of 40 students love coffee okay and remember Q cap will be the complement proportion that means the people who do not like coffee so with these two quantities we will be able to predict the true proportion that means I'll be able to talk about each and every member in the population so this is very useful uh, you can go out and interview um, you can just go to a marketplace and ask because in marketplace you'll meet different different kinds of people you can ask whether uh, they are in favor of a new government policy or whether they know about a particular disease or whether they are interested in something etc 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 you can do so many things and what you get will be p cap and of course you can develop q cap because uh, p cap plus q, pa q cap must be equal to one and with this you can talk about the whole population and that also with confidence this p is said to be between p cap minus e and p cap plus e where e is given by mod z alpha by 2 into sigma by root n and n of course will be always kept large in a postal survey 300 out of 500 people uh, are claiming that they are getting overcharged for public services and they are asking what will be the true proportion and this has been asked in 2072 okay now look at this we know p cap so first of all it right let p cap be associated with the people who believe that they are being overcharged for the public services and p cap is 330 by 500 and now the question is um, what will be p and that also they want 99 percentage confidence when we predict so immediately we can write q cap i told you p cap plus q cap is equal to one so this will be 1 minus p cap that is 170 by 500 and n of course is 500 and I told it will be kept large and alpha equal to 1 percentage because 99 percent confident means 1 percent significance and alpha by 2 equal to 0.5 percentage which is 0 0.005 we had been checking the same value two three times so I hope some of you even remember the value said alpha by 2 within modulus that will be 0 0.005 and that is 2.575 okay so the formula for e is mod said alpha by 2 root under p cap q cap by n use a calculator plug in these values and double check whether you are getting this or not and the interval is p cap minus e p cap plus e plug in the value of p cap and e you get 0 0.605 and 0 0.66 etc Okay, so the conclusion is we are 99% confident that 60.5% to 66% people believe that they are being overcharged. So look at this, we interviewed only 500 people but we are able to talk about the entire community, the entire society, the entire population. Okay, now let's check one more question and wind up this video and be ready with the calculator so that you can do the question by yourself okay the question is from 2071 okay so 
in a random sample of 400 industrial accidents it was found that 231 were due to at least partially to unsafe working condition okay so it's proportion they are asking true proportion and case one they are asked to use 99 percent then 95 percent okay now look at this let p cap be the proportion associated with unsafe working condition and it's found that it's like 231 out of 400 so immediately you can write q cap and what is q cap given to be 1 minus p cap and that will be 169 out of 400 and then is 400 i told it will be kept large now the formula for e is mod z alpha by 2 root under p cap q cap by n okay so case number one in case number one what we do is we take 99 percentage confidence that means significance will be one percentage so alpha by 2 is equal to 0 0.005 again the same value for mod z alpha by 2 that's it you can plug in calculate and then in number 2 you use alpha to be 5 percentage so alpha by 2 equal to dot 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 i hope you're okay with this these type of problems um, later on when we do a question paper discussion at the last after one more topic which is called testing of hypothesis which is approximately 20 marks in your exam we will learn a few more types uh, which is related to interval estimation and that is in some problems the error will be given e will be given and they might ask what is the sample size it's not a big deal i'll just give you the logic so that you'll be able to figure out yourself e is given by mod z alpha by 2 into sigma by root n right in case of estimation of population mean so you square on both sides and find cross multiply and find n anyway i'm going to wind up this video right now if you like the video please share with your friends and subscribe to my youtube channel and share the website www.stmattube.com with your friends so that's it soon i'll be back with the next video and in the next video we'll be learning about testing of hypothesis so till then bye